How you doing everyone? In this video, I want to talk to you about trades. So we're going to get really basic in here and, and show you how many trades you get each week, how each week works, you know, what kind of your average trades are going to be, and, and just a couple of new rule new rules around around buys this year. So if you happen to like this video, please hit that like button and, and hit the subscribe button and that notification bell so you can see more of these videos each and every day and each week. So we'll jump in and, and have a look here. So your standard trades are going to be two each week. We have 34 for the entire year. So that gives you an average of 1.4 per week. So that's when people say don't go spending all your trades at once. We also have a couple of buy rounds as well, which is going to be a little bit harder to, to create a 17 and make sure you have a full squad each week. So that's where everyone will say just to be selective in your trade. So first thing and easiest thing to do is to jump into your trade section up here on your screen if you're playing along at home and just say I want to trade out someone like Tino cool I hit the T button I can go in and select anyone from the mid position so when it loads and the trade pulls down here so I've got my players here why is it not loading exactly for my mids it's not but it doesn't matter so I can pick anyone from this selection down here and pop them into my squad so what it'll allow you to do if you're going Tino straight to someone on here, it's going to you're going to need to select a mid. Okay, the other option here is you can you can bring someone up from your interchange and use this S button. So if you're not used to that one yet, what you can do is hit S up there for your subs to sub into your mid position there. So this is a little bit different on the on the desktop to also on your phone. I find it a little bit easier to use on the phone and, and, and much quicker, but a lot of people like to use the desktop as well and it's easier for this video so he subs back into your mids and then you can you can pick anyone from the interchange there and that's why you have this full selection down here so obviously i can scroll through all our players these are all the top players and, and you know based on the top score and you can uh, and you can change the selection in through here but that's a very easy way for you to be able to select anyone from any position obviously they're gonna have to be you know at price at what at what tino is is there but that's a nice and simple way to do it and guys, just one more thing to think about is I've seen a lot of people doing the rage trade, as I call it. I've seen some trades this week with a Brimson and an RTS trading for a Luttrell and a, and a Pappenhausen. And that's just chasing last week's points. Yes, they look good, right? But why did you choose Brimson and an RTS? Just for the hell of it? Or did you... Choose them because you think they're guns and going to be guns at the end of the year. I think that's more the reason, right? You picked them because you think they're going to be guns. Look at their scoring from last year, right? Did they ever have a 30? Yeah, they did, right? They had multiple 30s. So did Pappenhausen. Latrell had a lot more 20s and 10s than, uh, than what those other guys did, right? There's a chance he does that this week. Could be the next three weeks. Could be great this week and then no good the week after. Same with um with some other trades like Tino down to like an Offangawi or a uh, Lee and Armau, you know, just not being happy with with one score. You know, think about why you brought them in, in the first place. If you're if you have to trade one of those guys because you are short in another position, I completely understand, but understand that. But if you're trading someone who's a borderline keeper for someone who's you know potentially going to make a little bit of cash for you, and then you're going to trade him out anyway. You're just burning through the trades really quickly, and, and that's not a great strategy, especially on the buy rounds when you want to use a bunch of trades and, you, and you're like, shit, I've traded two every week and I haven't got a chance to make many trades. And then, you know, even though my team hasn't done so well, you know, this first round, those last five rounds, I just pass you, right? If, you, if you're burning all those trades so quickly and not being smart with them, I'm just going to pass you at the end. And so are the good, all the good coaches out there. They're going to go past you and, and finish in that top 1,000 like like usual and, and and smash you there. So just just be careful of that. I, I'd love to love to help you guys, and that's that's the reason I'm making these videos is to is to hope that we have a, a lot more coaches that are in that. You know, let's make the top five to 10,000 ranks really really tough to get into over that long haul. So yeah, that's a that's an interesting option on that one. The next thing to talk about is going to be the actual rounds where you can get some extra trades. So what I found very interesting, there's, there's two there's two rounds where there's buys for each, for, for teams there. And, and half the teams don't play in round 13 and half the teams don't play in round 17. What they have done though is when the, there's a, 
a buy route. Oh, sorry, there's a, a week off for all the international games, and that's happening after round 15. But for some reason, they're giving everyone an extra two trades. So in round 13, 15, and 17, every team will be given four trades. And and these are times, these are usually good times to spend up most of those trades, sort of three to four there, to make sure that you're setting yourself, to, so, yeah, setting your team up well for the buyers, but also setting your team up well for the back end of the season. So that's where it's important to, if, you, if you've got some decent players across the first few rounds and you've done well, it's probably best to maybe only trade one per week and, and just make sure that your cash cows are rolling over and you've got some guys that are injured that like someone like Lodge that you can that you can move on to a better player. But so you're gonna have four trades for that. And what I need to say is that people ask do your if I don't use a trade this week, if I only make one trade this week, can I do three next week? And the answer is no to that one. So just just keep that nice and simple guys that that's not how it works. Alrighty, that's that's a good option there with, with Tino. You know, someone like if I was to trade Ricky, I could move Crichton from a mid down to an edge and I can bring in a mid. So these are the types of things you can you can do uh, with with your trades just to just to make things a little bit easier there. Uh, with your trades. So anything else I wanted to talk about? The only real thing was gonna be in terms of the loop. A few people have been asking about about the loop this week. So if I have Angus Crichton in here, I could I could sub him out for someone like Lydia, which is going to be perfect. I would then move Crichton up to number four. Okay, so you'd have to base it off if he if Crichton plays earlier in the week. So if we can look at a match center. All right. Okay, here we go. The fixtures are up top. Yes, yeah, so it's going to be a bit harder when, when Roosters play in the back end of the week. So Roosters are going to play the second last game of the round. So the only way you could use this loop this week if you have Crichton, you could do it if you have Lodge, for example, but yeah, let's do it if you wanted to keep Lodge and use him as a loop. So they play the third game of the week. What you do is have him in number four position. Okay, let's just pretend Lodge is down in number four position. So he doesn't get locked into the squad until he plays, right? So what you'd want is have someone in your number five position um, who plays earlier in the round. Uh, so Crichton would work for this as well. And if they score well, if they score a 50, for example, you then keep Crichton or Lodge in that number four position. And you will then, once they're locked in and they're a non-scoring player, you'll then receive number five's points. Awesome. If number five doesn't score well, you could then put someone like Tessie New, Farmacili, up into the number four position because they're both still allowed to be moved and you'll get their scoring instead. So that's that chance of getting two uh, scoring, op you know, two chances of a, of a decent score in your, in, in your interchange and emergencies. But if you're someone that's new to trading, I wouldn't be thinking about doing this too much as it's a little bit complicated and, and not exactly easy to do. But... Other than that, guys, in terms of your trades, just if you've got any other questions, please let me know. But that's the that's the crux of it and the most important part. And as I said, please hit that like button and, and the subscribe button if you're enjoying this uh, content, guys. It's going to be extremely regular, and I, I hope you have uh, some nice luck in round two. See you, guys.